Hey guys, welcome back to another week of Blind Wine. Uh, for copyright reasons, I have to sing over the top of this, but we're doing Around the World, Around the World. I literally can't have you hearing this just by itself, but the idea today is that we've got a whole pile of different sort of gems from the world of wine. I've got no shot of getting these right, but hopefully Brendan and Noah have some fun with it. And I'm excited to try some wines that I probably haven't had before. Uh, as ever, if you want to try any of these, different drop, hooking you up with 10% off. There's a link in the description down below. And please don't forget, remember, on the back of here, we made you a wine. We're not just reviewers, we're wine makers as well. So Magic 38, still got a few bottles of that kicking around, but it has sold pretty well. So let's get into these tastings. I'm super excited. Thanks for joining us. Wine number one. Okay, we are on. Uh, we have six rare beauties from around the world, and I think that might be a few of our listeners out there. Vaguely Moroccan. Maybe it's a Moroccan wine. Good though. Hey? Morocco. Oh, damn. Today's gonna be a drinking day. Fuck, today's gonna be a big drinking day. Everything's... <laughs> Wasn't planning on today being a drinking day, but I suppose it's gonna be now. So we had Riesling last week. Uh, I think this is more Riesling. So you're doing like a little bit of like, you know, conscious eating recently. And one of my favorite desserts recently has just been like a big old tub of Greek yogurt and some banana and some and just a drizzle of honey. That's what this fucking tastes like. It tastes like the dessert. Ha! And it's sweet. Boo! Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't straight off the bat. I love a sweet wine. Stunning Riesling. Probably German. Highly likely German. Uh, clean. Don't think it's betritized. I think it's um, definitely a, a full ripeness style wine and the pure honey that's there it just driving acid the sweetness and is that perfect interplay um, that is stunning riesling uh, it's, that's got to be german riz and it's just simply exceptional um i think that's 70 bucks and i'm 100 thinking 12 of that i know i've said morocco but i'm now thinking german riesling german riesling german riz uh dozens and that'll be expensive that'll be like 65 bucks a bottle if these are jewels from around the world, I reckon there's a really good chance that we're gonna be dropping some cash today. Head on to wine number two, something that looks a little bit opalescent and probably skinsy. Interesting, interesting, like amazing complex nose, mandarin sort of pith. It's got this like amazing passion fruity thing as well, like really fresh passion fruit, lovely pineapple thing. And that pat, like that, um, it's got this blood orange tang mango. Nuttiness and mousiness and reduction quite a bit on the show. And sometimes they lean too far in one direction. I'm getting the vibe that this is slightly natural. It does, it just, it has that sort of energy to it. We, we are in Australia at least producing wines like this that are really, 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 really good quality for not a lot of money. So I'm sure there's gonna be context as to the producer and as to the style and stuff like that. It's very clean. Like, this is awesome. Like, this is textbook, properly made, properly matured. I've never bought 12 of everything. I've never bought um, 12 of everything. I think we might get close today so far. But the way it started off, I don't wanna just ruin the last four, but the way it started off has just been like up my alley. Whether it is even natural or not, but it's just got this really nice sort of hazelnut roll through it, which is is super comforting. One of three looks like Nebbiolo. Actually, kind of looks a little bit like Tarvel, to be honest. Like, it's it's like we know Nebbiolo can give this sort of tawny hue. We also know that um, uh, it is light coloured, but it's just a little bit too light coloured. It's just a little bit too light coloured. That's so good. <laughs> That's so good. Yeah, this like maraschino cherry sweetness with the cut through this kind of like Earl Grey black tea tannin. It's freshness, it's got acid, it's like light and elegant and like like ethereally like aromatic and pretty. Okay, so I'll buy one bottle of it, that pending what Noah says about it, because he tasted this wine first, and if he was super about it, then it's just one of those wines that you need to buy a bottle of for four friends and drink a glass and a half each in 20 minutes sort of thing. I think the alcohol's a bit high. I think it's 100% mousy on the back palate. I think the nose has a little bit of VA, right. and I kind of don't think it's from Italy. I think it's from France. I think it's Langlois. Oh, it's so pretty and juicy. Sorry, wine. I can't get 12 of you now, you've gone mousy, bugger. But I'm still happy to pay 50 bucks. I'm getting six though, I really like it. All right, wine number four, red, okay. Just smelling like a more classic red wine. There's nothing, like the first three have just been like, what the fuck is this smell? This smells like red wine, we're back. Suave, smooth, cool, fun, plenty of length. That length is a little bit more like oak fuel than the fruit itself. 
<laughs> that's pretty fucking sensational. That's like that's that's some that's some brilliant burgundy. Like that has to be that has to be burgundy because it's just so elegant but powerful. The tannins like beautiful and lithe. The fruits just so like potent and pure. It's got like that fresh cherry thing. There's I reckon Brendo's gonna love that wine. I like it, but I just don't have that many. Like my kids don't play basketball and I don't have kids, so. There's no need for me to be getting up for that shit. Um, I'll have three bottles of it. It's good, but I don't like it that much. Kind of looks a little bit lean, but maybe like a, you know, it could be like an 01, uh, maybe 2020. Um, pretty, pretty suave little thing. Happily drop 75 bucks a bottle for it, and I'd buy 12. Very, um, very fun little wine. <laughs> Uh, number five, beetroot like red. That is absolute beetroot. Beetroot. Got on a burger in this country. We're weird. Quite tart, bright fruit at the front of the palate. A little bit of tannin to finish. I would say it's sort of like medium density red wine sort of category. There's a density to this and there's a power to this that I really, really enjoy. Um, the tannin on it's actually really quite structured and full. Not too sure I'd, I'd, I'd go to Italy on this, to be honest. Like the sweetness of the fruit is just it's so good it's just like that ripe dark plum blue fruited so i'm about that medium it's like the conor mcgregor no it's not the conor mcgregor but i just don't watch enough ufc to understand a contemporary reference it's the alexander volkanovsky there you go we're from australia can't see it as never. A little bit vexed, guys. I, I'm sort of like, my head's kind of jumping back and forth between like Rhone and like weirdly like Monty or something like that. Beach, like big like blueberry, fresh cherry. The tannin profile, live and gorgeous. Like a little bit more coarse than that kind of burgundy where it's a bit more fine, but I still think it wraps the fruit really, really well. It's a little bit riper. Uh, I'm gonna go, I think this is Beaujolais. I think this is like epic Beaujolais, like Morgan or something. No, I won't. Fuck, I would not pay $50 for that. I'll pay $30 for that. Lose your 20. Um. Gamma, I reckon. All right, and final, final one to line up. The deepest, darkest, densest little boy. This is like Rhone Valley at the absolute best. It's like this peppery, black olive, juicy thing. Holy crap. You know, grip ball, um, it was this thing that I played with growing up as a kid. You'd basically get like this sort of circular Velcro pad that had a strap on the back of your hand. You'd put that on there and then you'd throw a tennis ball and it would just grip to the thing. So imagine instead of a tennis ball, it's a strawberry. This is a strawberry grip ball of a wine. That is freaking wild. That is a dense wine. That's gonna like outlast like more and more and more. That has just got so much length, so much power. That's incredible. Holy shit. Like it's just got this raspberry vected red fruit and then it just rolls and envelops in those beautiful kind of savory characters, that meaty, gamey. And like New Weldy kind of feels kind of feels a little bit like either like a Parkerized version of Northern Rhone, uh, maybe something out of like Mendocino. We were so close to a clean sweep of just me buying dozens of everything, except one one, which is just went mousy a little bit. But overall, that is comfortably the best lineup we've had on the show. What a cool lineup. Oh my God. I would not have understood this if we were shooting this a year or two ago. Anyway, let's get uh, let's get Brendan and Nora and see what they think of it. And I'm exceptionally excited to find out what it is. Let's let's get together with the guys and check it out. Guys, around the world, Daft Punk style. Uh, we tried a whole pile of different beauties from around the world here. Yes. I was factuated with some of these, but also had no fucking idea what they were. I'm gonna call it here, with one exception. Yeah. Best lineup we've ever had on the show. Wow. wow. Best lineup we've ever had on the show. Besides one, I bought a dozen of everything. Wow. Okay. And I don't do that shit. No, you no, don't. You I don't, don't do that shit. I, I definitely <laughs> bought Lots. There are two that I didn't buy much of, but let's get into it. One number one. Um, so on the <laughs> oh, nose, dude, just <laughs> fuck off. On the it's nose, like, so good. I thought this smelled like my mum's cooking when she was being experimental back in the day and like trying new <laughs> recipes, and I was into it. I like mum's cooking. Is this German Riesling? Yes. Yes. Hey. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> Here we go. We're back. After last week, 100%. let's go. Yes, hundred mm. percent. Yeah. This. This is, is shit hot. This is this is dripping really in honey. This is. Like, uh, yeah, this is what we're talking about when we're talking about amazing Riesling. Yeah. 
unfucking believable. Yeah. Like you, you yeah. smell that and you're just like, oh, like it's yeah, it's it's honey, but it's not just honey. It's not just like you know, like a bag, of, like you know, store bought honey. It's this is side of the road Adelaide Hills like honesty box honey. This, this is, is evidence <laughs> there is a god. Like, yeah, exactly. A hundred percent. Yeah. No, he wants <laughs> us to be happy. He gave us this. Only divine intervention can create this. Hundred percent. This easily. Sick. Easily. How much were you spending? Uh, I spent sixty-five, and I wanted a dozen. I wanted a dozen, and I would pay seventy bucks. Ninety-five and twelve. How much was it, Lucky? Oh, of course it is. Room, room, That's yeah. Shit's hot. We're gonna have a great time. Are we doing a podcast today? Oh, I don't we care. We should do man. a podcast. Do <laughs> I, don't, I don't care. We can do whatever. We can shovel shit if we're as long as we bring it out. Like yeah. honestly. That's, Damn, that's, man. That's, that's the reason why it's like one of the most sought after reason brands in Gra the fucking world. Grache, Heimelreich, Spatlerse, Spatlerse, Spatler Cat Spine. Yeah, seven and a half percent alcohol. This is. Hey, kids, you're after those no low, you know, alternatives. Just spend a hundred and thirty five dollars. That's fine. Yeah. Unfucking believable. So I can have yeah. half a bottle with the amount that I was gonna pay for it. Now, wine cool. number two. Yeah. Bang, uh, yum, love, I'd, all the best. Yeah, loved it. Uh, I was a little bit vexed as to what it is because I was no under idea. the idea of like this was, I mean, this was pretty self-explanatory. Damn, we're talking about like dope, you know, German mm -hmm. reason. I'm pretty confident we're talking about dope wines across all of these, right? Yeah. Um, but that, I was like, it is very good. I spent 55 bucks on it. I want 12 of it. But in terms of something that has like, I don't know, like a, a reputation or it's like beauties from around the world, I'm not too sure what this is. Set of gear, maybe, but you that's too clean for it. That's too like fresh and vibrant and, you know, it's just very clean. The, I like, I loved the use of skin contact here. Mm -hmm. I think it was like mm -hmm. perfect. It's not too much. Goldilocks. Goldilocks. It like reminded me of like companion style uh, skin contact wines, maybe like Fiano Greco kind of thing, but not extreme, just a gentle amount, like a yep. few days. Mm. And I just thought it was like, you know, when I want orange wine, I want this yeah, forever. This is textbook. This is perfect. This is yeah. perfection in orange wine. There's no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't know what it is. No, I, I completely agree. Again, it's another one where I haven't thought about it as orange wine, but we've had it a few times recently on the show where I've gone like, oh, it's not quite the orange. This is exactly the orange yeah, wine. Yeah, 100%. Sick. I wanted a dozen of them for 50 bucks. Dozen 55? Dozen 75. Dozen. Very nice. <laughs> God damn it, Buck. Beaujolais Blanc. There's a new one for now, me. Now, that I was not expecting. Wow, so cool. So George, George Decombs is an excellent Beaujolais producer. Uh, mostly for Gamay, obviously. But this is this is the best Beaujolais Blanc I've ever Especially had. Especially Blanc Chard? Yeah. Wow. What's that Chardonnay? That's the most amazing skinsy Chard I've ever tried. That's, That's awesome. amazing. Yeah. That is so cool. Very, very cool. I've always been of the belief that, you know, um, you should not skin contact Chardonnay because why waste fucking money? Um, but like, I think, you know, we've had a couple of examples that, you know, break the mold. Like we've had Popple Bio, we had a couple, but mm. this is like, this is the classiest one I've ever seen. That's this amazing so guys. Good. Like definitely, if you're gonna, if you've got the budget, definitely crack into this. This is like fine wine in the world of skinsy wine. Mm. Like, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, fine cool. and fun. Wine number three. This is where it got really interesting. Yes, so interesting. I was- I, shit house wine, man. I was very lucky to taste this first. I was super lucky to taste this first. Because when I first smelled it, I was like, fuck yeah, this is gonna be amazing. Yeah. When I first tasted it, it was like, fuck yeah, this is amazing. And then, yeah. <laughs> the mousiness came in yeah. and I was like, yeah. uh, in the back of my head, I was like, oh, the boys aren't gonna have a fun time with this. And then uh, by all like, accounts <laughs> and purposes, what we've had chatted about off camera, uh, you guys did not have a good time. Oh, I was the last one to taste these. Oh, and... don't go again. Don't go again. <laughs> so we, 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 in full uh, disclosure here, we re-poured it because we we're like, ah, oh, we'll give it another shot for the group tasting. It's a little bit better than the one that's been sitting here for a little while, but it's not that much better. When I tasted it the first time Dude, I... Dude, whoa, that got real. Wow. Yeah. The first time that's, I... That's, that's hairy. It's pervasive, yeah. Wow. The first time I tasted Ooh. it, I was like, cool. It's like toffee and chocolate and mouse. And <laughs> <laughs> the first oh, part was mouse. awesome. It's but really wild. The that's, mouse that's really intense. kicks up. That is up. so mousy. Okay, okay. Well, beauties from around the world. I imagine these are kind of like maybe hype wines. What yeah. producers... My my call for this was Longlaw, the Tarble producer. Wow, okay. Could you... Maybe... The, could, it's a bit trousseau isn't it? It's a little bit like Domaine uh, Octavon. Oh, Octavon. I went Alpine Nebbiolo because aromatically oh, it had this Nebbiolo yeah, yeah, yeah. thing and then Looks it's like just kind too. of just like kicked into it. Mm. Could be, could be mm. Etna. I reckon it'd be sick if you had a bottle and you could drink it in 20 minutes. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. literally like, like to be honest, within the first half, like the first taste that I had, I was like, this is awesome. Yeah. I'm so yeah. into it. I literally written right there. I had 12 
written down, and then I scrubbed it out to six because then I started tasting the mouse. Yeah. So it literally, as soon as you crack this, I still say buy this wine. Chill it down. Chill well. it down. Yeah. Open it go. up. Stopwatch. Go. And Drink have, real goddamn quick. Responsibly. Four people sitting around the table, glass and a half each, and then get one of these after. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, wash, get the sugar, wash it all clean. Yeah, I had one for 38 because of course it's going to be $38 if it tastes like that. Two for 60. I was at six for 50. Yeah, nah. $90. Remember all that shit we said about, we still recommend buying this wine. $90? $90 for 20 minutes. If you can get this tax <laughs> Is that his, is this, this is his Is this Merlot? Merlot? No. So this is his beer. <laughs> this is fucking red wine! That's fucking white wine! That's Bianca. <laughs> yeah, this must be Pinot Gris. There's something going on here. There's 14 and a half percent alcohol skin contact Pinot Gris. Surely. Classic Radicon, guys, like like you run the risk. I've had the, some of the most amazing and some of the most uh, sketchy wines I've ever tried to come to this producer. Yep. That, that we use Pinot Gris. Yep. That's what Pinot Gris looks like when it's on skins. The, enough. Is that, like, um, that's, that's 750 mil? Yep. That's the best value Radicon you can get. Probably is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, within the, within um, the realms of Radicon. Yeah, in sure. the, in, only in the Radicon verse. It's like the best value Radicon, but yeah, nah, nah, nah. nah. Next up, one and four. What do we think? Holy shit, this is good Pinot. <laughs> yeah, it is good Pinot. Yeah. This is really, 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 really. This, like, like with, yeah. the, with the dip down that we had just before, this is yeah. unfucking believable I, I went with Premier Crew Berg. Yeah, I went Berg. This is Berg. It's got to be Berg. The Berg. tannin profile is just unbelievable. Just the complexity on the nose, like the the, the generosity, the uh, amazing. What an amazing wine. I Smart wine. I don't want to say what I said it was. You said it was Grenache. No. What did you say? I said it was Nebbiolo. I said it was Nebbiolo until I tasted it. I smelled it and I was like, it just doesn't smell like Nebbiolo. Yeah, see, I don't know what Nebbiolo smells like, but to me, that mouthfeel, like there was the oh, sort of... That, that grippy tannin. Yeah. yeah. Like, mm. And I don't expect that from Pinot. Yeah. Except for Berg. Yeah, so when Berg you- Berg has like, different rules. But yeah, Burgundy, <laughs> like, tannin applies. All right, yeah. I feel less stupid now, but yeah, I called it Italian Neb. I was into it, but like, uh, I don't want my, my Pinot to be that grippy. Uh, so I had three for $45. Today's a drinking day, that's all, all I can say. Yeah, it's a fruit day today. Um, all Pinot day. can be like this for us, like, forever and ever. This is absolutely unbelievable. 12, 120 bucks. This is I, I said 75, <laughs> but it's also like, what the, what premium crew Berg's gonna be 75. So I'm gonna stick to my gun, 75 and 12. I'll mm. pay upwards of 150 for this. It's very good. How much is it? I'm so glad that- Oh my God. What a return to form Whoa. from week to week. From like something that I was like, oh, what the fuck is this? You guys are big on that that sort of uh, floor, floor riesling, and riesling yeah. to boom, like amazing. Rip Emma's on. block, rip on. Amazing, amazing Central Otago Pinot Noir. This, this is that why is that like some people say outside of Burgundy, one of the best places to grow Pinot in the world is Central Otago. That's what. That's fucking why. That is un yeah. goddamn believable. Yeah, yeah. That's what people are talking about there when they talk about that. For mm. Sure. Number five. Oh, boom! The hits just keep on coming, brother. Like, goddamn, like <laughs> unstoppable stuff. I wave it on this. I'll be honest. I wave it a little bit. Um, I, I wasn't I too sure, or, like, the direction to go in with this, with both of these next two wines. But like the last one, I, I loved a lot more. But this one here, it's so green. There like, is, yeah, there's like it feels like Cabernet. Like it wants to be Cabernet. Yeah, like a whole bunch of like sherbet thing on the nose. So yeah, Wait, then, what and, 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 and you taste it like well, when you taste it, it's like plummy, yeah, juicy. Yeah. All right, power of deduction, boys. Let's see. Let's see how okay, much you know. Okay. You've got this plummy, juicy thing, but it also wants to be Cabernet because it's got this green Gamay. There we go, baby. Let's Gamay. Gamay. I actually. Boys. Dude, if this is Gamay, this is the best call I've ever made on the show because That's I actually thought gamma. about yeah, it. Yeah, I, I didn't even consider it. But yeah, it's true. It's, it's, it's like more gone. It's like that power yeah, density style of Gamay. This is like epic Beaujolais. And if it's a good price, you should absolutely um, stock up on this. This is, this is fucking really awesome. Prices. I'm just going to forewarn you. This is going to be, be like it, at least seventy. It'll be, it'll be sub above. 100. It'll be sub 100. But like, like that kind of quality is like at half the price of that Pinot. I'm happy with okay. that at the same quality of the I'm going to call yeah. it as over 100. Just, just so I can be contrarian. Yeah, 110. Uh, yeah. I said 12 for 80 bucks. Yeah, I said six for 30. I said three. I judged it harsh. I'm wrong. Don't trust me. How much is it? Oh! <laughs> what? <laughs> edged. You just got edged. <laughs> just not. Oh man. Oh, oh my to roll the go! <laughs> to roll the go! That's the greatest to roll the go I've ever had in my life! 
What the fuck gamay. is that? Gamay, 100% gamay. No, it's like Toroldigo, uh, amazing great variety from uh, up north, Friuli way, uh, or Alto Adige. Yeah. Literally, when we were standing- From the, the hands of Elisabetta Foradori. When we were standing one, here patting me on the back about how it was gamay, I said this thing in my head go, that's too good. <laughs> This isn't gonna happen for you. The defeatist, this isn't yeah, yeah, be yeah, yeah, yeah. The defeatist imposter attitude, syndrome. Yeah, the defeatist attitude sets in and is like, you know it can't be right. You know right. you can't be that close. That, but, but still, that is that is like Tyrol de Go is known for being intense and tannic and ridiculous. But that's like that's amazing. And the sherbet-y thing is just so yeah, vibrant. That's a really, so really cool one. And wine number six. Back on form for me, 12. Holy fuck. Yeah, yeah. I, I had nine of this what? just because. What is this? What is this? Where were you guys with this? I wrote strawberry grip bowl down. Like imagine grip bowl, but instead of Oh, a that's my favourite Spanish wine region. It's a strawberry, <laughs> yeah. 100 percent That's what I wrote down. <laughs> I had no fucking idea. I was set with my game, I guess. I'm like, my work here is done. I'm gonna have some wine and enjoy myself. I think I thought this was like delicious, like Northern Rhone, uh, Syrah, like this Ooh. pretty juicy raspberry thing, but then that peppery, like olivey thing comes and gives you complexity. This is stonking. Like, this is, yeah, I wow. could not pick wine to line up to save my goddamn life, but this might just be it for me. I thought this was utterly incredible. I, I honestly thought, so you guys weren't gonna buy much of this. I wanted to buy a lot. I wanted to buy 12. I was right on form. Wanted to spend a lot of money, 80 bucks. I went Northern Rhone as well again, but then I started to tiptoe into like, weirdly enough, like parts of Italy. Like, like not, not Sange, but like Monte. And I'm like, I don't know, like it's, it's the meatiness as well as yeah. the medical oak, the lashings of oak, but also how primary fruited it is. Mm. Like it's hard to find these Northern Rhones that are just that crisp and clean and primary. And I thought, oh, new world. Mm. Is it um, Syrah from like Mendocino? Is it American? Are we could like- be, Could be like, um, uh, what's his fucking name? What's the uh, Northern Rhone, like Natty, producer, um, makes Gamay as well. Uh, Herve Suo. Herve Suo. Oh, like this could be Herve Suo, like in a good year. Graminol. In a really, really good year. Uh, so good, so good. Yeah. Like really, really, really good. Graminol's a great shout. Syrah was, yeah, definitely in the spectrum, I reckon. What do we got? <laughs> Barossa. Uh, like, we don't talk enough about this guy. Oh, he, he's look at the punt on that. <laughs> oh my God. Look at that. Dan Standish, 100%. So he has been making bangers of wines for so, so long and and stands up there with like the Fraser McKinley's mm -hmm. uh, you know of the world doing these but probably like outrageously old vine Syrahs um, and doing them like immaculately well. I'm they are all very expensive though. I am a gape. I am absolutely a gape. That is fucking unbelievable. That is yeah. like that punt's it, mental, that, dude. That is like... <laughs> okay. Do you mind looking in there? I think I lost my keys. Yeah, uh, honestly. <laughs> like, honestly, like, it's just... Like, I didn't even think about uh, Australia. Like, there was no... You could drink it's like a multi-use, <laughs> like a... <laughs> Do you reckon anyone's ever drunk $130 Riesling out of a $130 bottle of... Fucking <laughs> hell. That's, that's, that's even more expensive than uh, fucking Zolto. All right. <laughs> That's incredible. What's the wine of the lineup? Like? I don't know, dude. That's I don't mine. know. The Riesling that we had first. Is I'm mine. happy with that because I got 12 of that too. <sighs> but it's like. But that's expected that's real to a degree. good though. But no, but how, how did you go with this? You wanted. 12? I wanted a dozen. I wanted a nine of the we Shiraz. Are. And the fact that that's a Barossa Valley Shiraz that I want nine of is pretty impressive. So yeah, it was a Barossa Valley that I was willing to pay 12, uh, 100 bucks for 12. Um, oh, but it's like all really, 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 really good. I think I think Prum, but by by sheer weight of numbers, we all adored it. Yeah. At thirty six total. 12, 12 and twelve. Twelve, yeah. 12 and hundred percent. Like it's got to be Prum. Um, but that being said, take the Radicon out of it. That is the best lineup we have comfortably had on that show. That yeah. is fucking stunning. Very good. If you've wow. got heaps of money and want to throw a bunch of it at a bunch of wine, buy these five wines. Leave yeah. the Radicon out of your shopping trolley. Yeah, maybe, maybe a tax return just came Was in. this Was this almost a, a, a thousand dollar bracket, do you reckon? We're, we're definitely in the five, I reckon, we're, well, I reckon we're maybe 700. We, yeah, we, 700 we spent a bracket. couple hundred bucks or more. That's a good, that's a good, that's a good, I mean, you've got to pay Noah's talent fee for being here as well. This is a very expensive very episode. Expensive. Very expensive episode. <laughs> uh, hey, my talent fee really is about this. Yeah, much, <laughs> much <laughs> much yeah, yeah Just give me the wine as well. If you, you guys can keep the Radicon, I'll take the rest as well. All right, all right. see cool. you next time, guys. Ciao, ciao. ciao. Bye. <laughs>